Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 25 of the Showbound podcast presented by Axel Watches. I'm your host, Michael Raskin, once again, joined by Ethan Cardwell. And Cardsy, we, we got some tough news we got to get into right away. So uh, you want to just get into it, break it for us? Yeah, the OHL has announced its cancellation of the 2021 season. And, you know, it's a, it's a tough day for us and it sucks, but the news was inevitable. And I know we touched on it before and I, I've kind of been telling you in our talks one-on-one, uh, like the OHL isn't going to start. Like it was, it was, it was something that we all saw coming, but I never wanted to admit it really on air or anything because as a player in the league, you got to stay hopeful and whatnot, but I know you were kind of the more negative approach about it, but yeah, no, we both knew, uh, knew this day was going to come, but we finally have the news now. And I mean, it allows them to get ready for next season as much as it does suck. And I know I mentioned it later on in the interview, but hindsight 2020 now I'm kind of glad I went to Sweden and got that experience just to be able to salvage some sort of my hockey season. But yeah, what are your thoughts on this? Yeah. Well, first of all, for sure, it was a good call for you to go to Sweden and to get some pro experience and still continue to make a name for yourself for the scouts and have a good year. But yeah, it really sucks for the players who didn't get the season, but I mean, there's nothing really like they can do about it. And it's, it's no one's fault, obviously it's just an insane circumstance, but yeah, I was like you said, I was negative about the whole time. Like I, I couldn't see them starting. Then, you know, there's now there's a stay at home order here in Ontario. And it's like, what what next? So it's better focus, get ready for the next season. Don't like no need to keep stringing the players along. It's almost May. Like it just can't happen. So um, it sucks, obviously. And I was looking forward to seeing seeing the season. But it is what it is. H- happy for you and like everyone who did get a chance to play. But yeah, I, I do feel for the guys who didn't get a chance to showcase themselves. So definitely, definitely tough, but, and actually as well, the WHL announced they're going to be, uh, they're canceling their playoffs. So it'll just end at the end of the regular season, but at least they got to play not like, there's not going to be a champion, but like, what do you think of that? Yeah. I, I think the WHL kind of canceling their playoffs was triggered by the CHL saying there's no member. Cause like, what's, what's really the point in, in having a champion? It's, it's always the, the big dance to go to the Memorial cup and the winner of that league gets to go. So it is unfortunate that they can't have a playoffs, but Hey, they got to play. We didn't. And I don't even know what the Q is doing, but with the O having no season, what's really the point, just they have to deal with so many teams coming together. And we only have to deal with two States and one province here in, in the Ontario league. And they got a bunch of provinces to deal with out West there. And they also got a few States there. I'm pretty sure. So it would have been tough to make a playoff happen for them. And, uh, but Hey, at least they got to play the games they did and, kind of let their players still have that exposure you know yeah exactly no one like everyone's just happy to play no i don't even think anyone cares um Mm -hmm. some some tough news for us who we've been talking golf a lot and uh that we can't golf in ontario for the next month man like what do you think of that well i don't know man i feel like it could get switched back i know we saw like you know how they said there was no playgrounds yeah the the playground thing got switched yeah yeah and and golf is way less than playgrounds like you're you're i know you don't have to touch like metal bars and stuff you're completely on your own distanced from people and stuff like that it's like man like i don't don't understand but hey um we don't make the rules but like you're not touching anything in golf so i don't i don't see why it's a problem but i feel like the social media influence could really be a factor here and a lot of people yeah. just pushing for golf so you know I, it could happen i i really hope so man or else we're gonna be in shambles i know i was just getting good but um yeah i want to mention our guest this week we got minnesota wild prospect and captain of the sioux greyhounds ryan o'rourke and he's playing his first season in the hl right now for the iowa wild so it was a good chat with him uh pretty funny one he's a he's a cool guy so that was good to get him on and um some some big nhl news actually we got to talk about man patrick marlowe patrick marlowe broke the all-time games played record passing gordy howe with his 1768th game so we got to congratulate him like insane career and just even thinking about that number is not say eh, cards like what do you think of that bro to even be thrown in the conversation of your name kind of being thrown around gordy howe it's just unreal and i can only imagine how much of an honor it is for him but for him to stay healthy for that long. And I know his games kind of went downhill in the last few years. We've all seen it, but I mean, he's sticking, he stuck around, he stayed healthy and he must have a sick regimen. If he, if he can last that many years in the NHL and just be able to, he hasn't missed a game since 2009. I saw this morning, like yeah. th- this guy is like Keith Yandel, but, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, he, he's incredible. Good for him. And 
yeah, kudos for that record. That's pretty amazing. And that's one that could stand for a very long time. Yeah. That it's one of those things you don't even think of really like ever breaking at all. You kind of, all those records are set so many years ago that it almost, they always seem kind of very uh, impossible to reach. I saw like in, in all the major North American sports, like a, a games played record hasn't been broken in like 40 years or something in any of the sports. So very, mm -hmm. very uncommon uh, achievement and pretty exciting. And um, did you see his gloves? There was like the little mistake, the gra grammar mistake on that. It's a little embarrassing. Yeah, I saw that, but I also saw he, he had the pens logo and the Leafs logo on there too, which is, it was kind of cool and it, it was a nice touch to see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I do want to say after we send it over to the interview, um, we had asked for some, some topics from the fans on Instagram, like what you guys want us to talk about. And a lot of people were saying they want us to just get in on the Jake Paul, Ben Askren fight. So we will uh, touch on that after the interview, if you want to stick around for that. But uh, before we do get to the interview, I just want to say that support for the Showbound podcast is brought to you by Manscaped, who's the best in men's below the waist grooming. Big news, Manscaped just released their new cologne scent to help you feel good and smell good all over and at all times. Who knew smelling this good could feel this good too? Manscaped is trusted by over 2 million men worldwide. Join the movement for all your below-the-waist grooming needs. Everyone knows Manscaped has a perfect package 3.0 for your below-the-waist grooming needs, but they didn't stop there. Complete your grooming game with the new refined cologne signature scent by Manscaped. With the same signature scent that's in all Manscaped formulas, this cologne is a perfect complement to the collection. Light, approachable, and gentlemanly in all the right ways. Think of it as your wingman for the night to keep you fresh and ready for anything. Calming and inviting, the signature scent introduces a light citrus burst before settling into the anchoring notes of vetiver and a woodsy masculine finish. This 50 milliliter spray cologne is even, hypoallergenic, cruelty-free, dye-free, paraben-free, and 100% vegan. The beautifully designed glass bottle makes a statement and the manly scent is attractive to set the mood. Also, be sure to check out the Perfect Package 3.0 with all the essentials for your below-the-waist grooming needs, including the Lawnmower 3.0 trimmer and crop formulations. Yes, I'm talking about ball deodorant and toner to keep your testes besties. And now you can use the new Manscaped Refined Cologne to complete your set and smell great anytime, anywhere. It's time to feel sexy. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code SHOWBOUND at manscaped.com. Your balls and body will thank you. And one more time, that's 20% off and free shipping with the code SHOWBOUND at manscaped.com. Look good, smell good, and feel good with Manscaped. Um, cards, quick question, actually. Before we send it to the interview, one of the other topics uh, one of the fans sent in, I, I, I wasn't sure. I couldn't really come up with an answer, but I think I'll put both of us on the spot. Um, he asked the question, if the OHL had a Selkie trophy, who would be a good candidate? This is tough, man. I know like a lot of OHL players kind of going up the ranks. That's a, that's a big component that we have to work on to – make it to the pro level and you kind of realize it, but I'm just trying to think, do you have a guy in mind? And then I tell you who I think. I, like I didn't even think of an answer before I, I, I I'm very, very focused. I think just cause those are like the guys I was really watching last year, like being with the team that I wasn't really paying attention to the other guys as much. So the first one that comes to mind, I, I honestly have to say Jason Wilms. Um, he was very mm -hmm. defensively responsible for us. I think, you know, being an older guy too, um, that helps and he knows his role, but he was very, very good in the D zone. Like you can trust him in any situation. So I, I'd probably throw him up there with, with, uh, most of them. A guy, yeah. A guy who kind of just came to my mind, a guy who came on the pod is Delhi. Like we talk about him in the interview a little bit too. He's a, he's a pro. He plays the game the right way. And yeah, he's, he, you see kind of his points kind of go up in a uh, steady, uh, climb throughout his years. But like, man, yeah, he, he knows how to play the D side of the game. He gets, uh, takes care of business down there and then kind of lets his offense take, take control from there. Hey, funny enough. You said that there's an Instagram page. I'll shout about Ty Delandria for Selkie. He follows us and he's always DMing like responding to the stories on the pod, but that's pretty funny. You said that because he actually has an Insta going to get, get that going. That's hilarious. That guy, that, whoever that guy is, he'll be fired up when he hears that one. <laughs> yeah. Shout out Delandria. Um, I was just yeah. thinking before, before you send it over to a thing that just popped onto my phone was, um, a petition to get golf back in Ontario. So I'm going to, I'll sign it right after this and I'll send it over to you so we can get, yeah, let's go. But I, I saw someone standing, there were people standing outside Queens park in Ontario with uh, all their golf gear on and their golf bags on their back with signs, like let us golf and stuff. Like people are yeah. they're really pushing that, for it. That was classic, man. And um, you know what? We're, we're going to be, we're going to be looking good regardless when we get back on the course and we're, we're going to be rocking our axle watches, AX underscore showbound for, for everyone who wants to, go purchase an actual watch and be looking like me and you're asking 
to go along with some golf merch that we're going to be picking up soon. We can't disclose information on that yet, but uh, yeah. you're going to be smelling great. I mean, I think birdies are just going to be flying to us with our great smell from the Manscaped Cologne. But yeah, I think I think that pretty much does it. Like, so. <laughs> big big sponsor guy cards. Let's go get it in. Out of yeah, no, I, I had to get it in when I could, and I mean with this good audio and good picture, I mean, I look great now, but, uh, I had some computer troubles for the listeners today. And, uh, I think it's not too noticeable, but I had to film off my phone for, for the interview just because my, my laptop's bugging me, but, uh, Hey, you know what? We made it work and it still sounds pretty good. So yeah, we made it work and, uh, and yeah, we'll, we'll send it over to Ryan O'Rourke now. All right. Uh, welcome to the pod Rorky. How's it going, bud? Not bad yourself. All right, not bad hanging in there. Another uh, Ontario lockdown that me and Rask are kind of going through, but uh, you're you're lucky to be out in Iowa. So uh, can you kind of just tell the fans of the pod here what's what's going on out there, first year in the AHL, and just how that's going? Uh, it's definitely a lot different, I think. <clears throat> from you and I, from our experience of junior hockey, I think it gets competitive and it gets hard to a certain point, but I think kind of once you're out here, you realize it's not really uh, – a game really it's kind of your job and your life and I think you kind of have a different mindset but I think uh again at the end of the day it's hockey and it's you're just doing what you love yeah and I know you played in the Sioux so kind of close to the American border but kind of the first time like living in the states maybe um in a way so like what's that been like for you living on your own kind of pro lifestyle and uh just first time is this your first time being on your own yeah um, besides junior yeah billets though but yeah it's honestly it's not horrible I actually I have a roommate here um he's one of the other goalies we have and team pays for the apartment so we're not really kind of worried about that as much um just worry about groceries food stuff like that and um again he's a great roommate so uh I think me and him living together we're a pretty good duo uh we have a lot of fun yeah and it sounds like he walked in there so you have to pump his tires a bit oh yeah <laughs> Yeah. And I, I think you were mentioning maybe getting the vaccine soon. Um, or, or have you got it? Uh, our whole team's actually got it. Um, we we're pretty lucky that they had a good amount sent here and the team doctors kind of fit us in there. So a lot of us are really thankful for that. And I think it's, it's definitely great for us to have. Yeah. And I mean, we just saw the news kind of this morning about the OHL shutting down and stuff. So that's unfortunate on that front. I mean, in the, in the States, they're kind of firing vaccines out more rapidly than uh, back here at home. So you guys are fortunate enough to that, have that and kind of have the season going smooth. And it's going to be nice for you for summer to kind of come home and not have to worry about much. Yeah, seriously. It's pretty wide open here too right now. So it's been, it's been, the cases have been down, but again, I think everybody's got to be careful, especially us with kind of the setting we're in and the opportunity that we've been given this year. Yeah. And another thing, just kind of before I send it over to Rask is you guys, you guys actually have fans in the building, a decent crowd every night too, to say that like, it's not small crowd. So how has that been to just be able to play in front of fans? Uh, it's definitely better than none. Um, I mean, we go to Rockford, they have none there. Uh, Texas has got a pretty decent crowd. Chicago's a practice rink. Um, <laughs> we get, I think we get over, like say four and a half, five thousand each game, and we got a pretty wow. big. It's yeah, it's definitely better than no fans. It gives you it's kind of that sixth man, and I guess it kind of motivates you a bit more to play better for the fans. Yeah, not bad. And you play in the Minnesota Wild Ring, right? Uh, with the farm team, yeah. With Iowa, yeah. yeah. So you're in the big big rink, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so okay, that's that's pretty cool, man. That's definitely cool, and um. I just, before we like, we, we'll get back a bit to the AHL stuff and talk about that a bit later, but I want to kind of go back. We, we sort of bring it back through the beginning of your career and work our way to now. So I want to talk minor hockey. Um, I'm, I'm just curious. Cause you know, you were like, you came into the OHL and stepped in like a, like a top player type of thing. Everyone kind of knew who you were in minor hockey. Were you always kind of on the, the better end? Like you were always really good and dominant at those levels. I think I was always on good teams. Um, I think, I wouldn't really say some, I'm sure there's some guys that, you know, they say, Fuck, I'm a good, excuse me. I'm a good, yeah, good. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a good minor hockey player. Like guys in the OHL draft, you know, if you're good, but I don't think there was really a point where it was kind of like, I'm better than these guys, whatever. It was kind of, 
I'll keep playing my game if I'm playing, like, I don't know if I'm playing good, playing bad. And I think it was just wherever I got drafted to was kind of the first step. And then it was kind of everything I did after that was really kind of all that mattered, really. Yeah, for sure. And so what was the point growing up, like whatever age, when did you start to realize this could maybe be your career? Maybe you can make the NHL and, and make a living playing hockey. Probably around, say, minor Bantam, major Bantam. So I guess 14, 15, kind of around yeah. that. That's kind of when you're getting more used to the OHL and kind of learning more about it. And I think that's when you kind of, for the younger guys, you see, oh, this guy played. Oh, he plays there now. This guy, this guy. And I think that kind of just gives you a bit more motivation, especially at that age. And I think if you're really set on it, I think you have that dream. And I think you're going to do whatever you can to, to kind of realize that dream. For sure. And uh, like minor midget season, you played on a sick Vaughn Kings team with Fets. So a guy we've had on the podcast twice now, and you guys lost in the OHL cup final to the Toronto junior Canadians. But can you just tell us about that experience, kind of the tournament and playing on national TV, that final game, how that went for you and maybe um, expectations heading into the OHL draft after that. Um, I think for me and Fets, especially we were lucky. We played with Whitby the year before. Um, and kind of got a taste of the OHL Cup. I think we lost in the quarterfinals. Um, but that game, our year, I think it was probably a lot A lot of guys, it was their first time on TV in general or even on a game like that. And I think it was just kind of, I wouldn't say added pressure, but there was kind of more to the game. Um, I think, yeah, we got out on the wrong end. I think it was 5-1 or something in the finals. And that was the team I had played for for, six years in the GTHL before that in minor hockey. So that stung a little bit more too. Um, but yeah, I think it was, it was definitely a cool experience to kind of be in the position you were uh, in the setting we were. And I think overall a great experience and it probably helped with kind of leading into that draft and, and kind of finishing the year strong. So yeah, before the o- OHL draft, you had a couple games in the OJ with the, with Whippy. So how was that little taste of junior hockey for you? Uh, It was pretty good. I think it was kind of, it was just a step up from what I was playing and kind of just to, to get me prepared and, and even help me in that minor midget year. Um, I was lucky enough that Rob Pearson, our minor midget whippy coach was now the coach of the fury. Um, So there was a bit of help there with kind of getting us to practices and and getting us a spot in games. Um, I think during the games, it was at that time, I would compare it to the OHL to me. Um, again, just kind of bigger, stronger, faster, but I think it was kind of just giving me more time or giving me more games to kind of get ready for faster and bigger guys. And I wouldn't say it was the greatest five games, but I think it was whatever. It was fun. It was at that time. It was, it was really good for me. Yeah, no, it definitely helps the development too. Like just kind of getting those games in. I got this kind of same experience and it's a, it's a bit of an eye opener. Like we're all good players in our own leagues. And then you kind of go there, you're playing bigger guys and you're kind of shitting your pants, to be honest. But no, then you roll into the OHL draft, um, highly touted prospect, obviously got a lot of exposure at OHL cup and whatnot. So end up going 20th overall in the first round of the Sioux Greyhounds. And everyone knows the Sioux kind of develops players and, and, and just makes players into, in, in, into professionals. And they have a good track record in that regard. So can you kind of just walk us through draft day experience and just like how that went for you? Um, I wasn't really expecting anything crazy. Um, I would say I was, I had it, whatever. I had kind of an, an itch of where I would go maybe. Um, but kind of at the end of the day, like I said earlier, I was just, it didn't really matter kind of where I went. It was kind of whatever I did after. Yeah. But I think that opportunity and the suit taking me was I wouldn't really say really helpful, but I think it was a good decision for me and for them. Um, I think, again, you went, you touched on the, <clears throat> who they've had go through there before. And I think it's just, it's a good team to be at. It's a good spot to be in. And I think you can, I think you definitely learn and become a better player kind of out of that system or out of that organization. Yeah. And just before like Rask, you know, talk about your first year here coming up, but I mean, we were talking about the OJ and just kind of playing against bigger, tougher guys and, you, you kind of came into the league as a 16 year old and you weren't afraid of the physical play. You played mean tough. And I'm all we're like, we're buddies and you're always hacking me. And, and I, I hated playing against you. You're, you're one of the tougher guys to play, especially when you got to play them eight times a year. So 
that's not too enjoyable. But yeah, no, Rorke definitely steps in. He's an offense like offensive threat too. I remember you scoring in the first game of your career. But yeah, so Rask, you got anything? Well, what was that like? Take us through that first game you scored. How does that feeling go? Like big weight off the back or what? <sighs> I don't really remember that game. It was a tappy. I can remember because I was in the crowd. <laughs> where you belonged at that point yeah <laughs> um just even kind of going to that first game I think it was obviously I was probably a little bit nervous but I think it was kind of like this is it now it's not junior hockey you know you're gonna have to go through some shit you're gonna have to work through some crap and again I think it was just it's whatever you do after that and I think from that first game it kind of just picked off and got comfortable really quick probably within the first few games um and then obviously yeah scoring my first goal in my first game was was pretty cool I I don't remember how it really developed but we had 2D up in the rush somehow and I think it was DeMeo who kind of threw it over to Frost and I was just there kind of waiting to sell and I wasn't expecting it and he just tapped it back and I think I had the whole entire net to just tap it in so pretty cool one pretty cool to have him assist on it as well um he was a great guy I thought he got along well with everybody and yeah it's it's I'm not going to forget it that's for sure so yeah so like Morgan Frost there's some other big names you played on a sick Sioux team your first year like um I think they finished top the year before or something and and they've always just been good so how does the adjustment go for you stepping in with an already extremely talented lineup I think it's kind of with any team I would say the same I mean it may be different other places but when you're kind of playing with those good players, it gives you more confidence and you see them making plays and you see them, like if you move them the puck, you know, you're doing something good. If you, it's easier to play with them around you, I think. And even if from the forward guys, you learn a lot kind of about how the league is and you learn about other guys. So I think having them there was pretty good. And obviously having the year they did before was for them really good. And I think, My first, I don't, we didn't really, we lost to you guys. We lost to Saginaw in the second round. Yeah. Uh, Personally, I thought we had one of the best teams in the league. Obviously, you know, there was better teams, but I thought we had a really, really good team. And I think, you know, Saginaw was a bit better and they got the best of us. But I think even just from that first year playing around the playoffs, I think you just learn so much from those older guys and and those guys that have now moved on to the NHL. You kind of just, just wears off on you really. I mean, I was going to bring that up. You lost to Karzi second round of the playoffs there, but how was, how was that playoff experience? Like the change in the atmosphere, especially in the Sioux with, with the team with such great fans, like how was that experience for you? And what kinds of things do you learn going through that in your first year? Uh, I can remember before our first playoff series, we played Owen sound. And I remember our coach saying, it's just, you take regular season hockey compared to playoff hockey, no matter what league it's in, it's, it's just two, three times better. It's two, three times quicker. And I remember that Owen Sound series. I think we lost the first game in OT. And then I think we went four straight and knocked them out. And we were, I think we were riding a bit hot. And I think we had a pretty good battle against you guys that year in the regular season, Cardsy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, dude, actually, what I remember, too, is we, we had just won our first game against Sarnia, too in round one and we were all watching because you guys were in OT your first game against mm. Owen Sound and was it Sushko who scored and he, somebody did a re- absurd celly and we're like okay it's over like the Sue is going to tre- no one wrinkled it on his hand no yeah, <laughs> yeah was, man. does that get the boys fired up to win the next one uh yeah it does yeah that's funny what, what did he actually do there? I think you kind of cut out when you were saying it. Like, what, what was the celly in OT? I don't remember how he scored, but I think he turned around and he kind of, like, wiped the ice off of his blade and, like, sprinkled it on his hand like that. And guys were like, what the hell is this guy doing? <laughs> and then he four straight. Yeah, and then four straight sweep. It, we got him back in the end. It's whatever. That's unreal. Yeah. But, dude, I actually, one thing I was just going to chime in about the Sioux, like, like the Dow, it was getting pretty good and everything, but like the Sioux, everyone, it's known like that. That's what they're known for. They're the, the Greyhounds and everyone gets behind them. And we talked about it before on the pod. I think we were talking about with Dammer 
just like the crazy fans in the Sioux and the playoffs and stuff. And you got that yep. lady behind the bench chirping and it, it's a gong show there, man. And it just, people are losing it. I remember I was in the cr- crowd, like I think one or two games that we were in the Sioux and people are just screaming at me. I'm like, buddy, I, I'm not even out there. Like I'm not doing anything right now. Like relax. And then um, I remember Ivan, our goalie was getting into it cause he flipped the net and people were freaking out. But that was a, that was a, that was a good series overall though. Like, and we kind of took a stranglehold on that series. And then Frosty kind of woke up and gave you guys a second life. I remember just, he had like a Hattie and like two apples. And I was like, oh no, we're in trouble. I remember, I think game one was, I think it was six, four, maybe. Yeah. One was a real good game. And then I think it was game two. You guys beat us maybe three, nothing or something like that. <laughs> and then game three, we go into Saginaw and it's, we're all, you know, hoorah before game three. Like, we're down two. We need a win. Yeah. On one or 10 two that game for 10, some... ten two. I think ten they two. scored four or five in the first, at least. And I, I remember our whole bench was just like, this game's got to end. Like, yeah. we came in so hooting and hollering for game three. And I think you guys just sucked the life right out of us. And again, yeah, I think we had a strong push kind of at the end there to kind of get back into it. But at the end of the day, it was the way it went it was you know deserved to be that way i guess you could say yeah exactly but i actually I remember mean, um I, I might cut this out but just funny enough i was so during <laughs> in the middle of that series i was like ripping some fortnite with sam Rook, and uh <laughs> they were down three one and roth I, rother was was on with us and i remember that was sam Rook's like overage year like that was it for him Mm-hmm. And he was like, "We need a win like tomorrow, so bad." Roth, like all of a sudden, Roth is like, "No one comes back from three one, Sammy." Like, go to use for it's like, get out of here. <laughs> I, like, I get so <laughs> sad too. The guys are demoralized. I think, like, I don't know. <laughs> I could see Roth was saying that for yeah. sure. <laughs> that was pretty funny. Yeah, I mean, the guy Roth is just shutting her down on the boys early. But... Oh, early on in the year, you're always off. Like, I want to go home. Like, when's this gonna end? And then you kind of hit a certain point, like just before playoffs where you're like, I'm not going home. Like we're playing now. It may be different team to team, but you know, it's everybody does it. It's yeah. I feel like, I feel like it's pretty standard. Like you get, you get the itch to go home right around Christmas and then you kind of get into the dog days after Christmas for a bit. And then soon as playoffs come, you're like, yeah, like we got to dial in here. This is it now. Cause everyone says they want to go home and see their family until, until it's crunch time. And, and then you kind of bear down on it, but, I could That's see, enough. Pardon? I could see Rother saying that too. Oh. <laughs> I feel bad calling him out now. Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, it's already out there, and it's going. I, I, wait, I just want to clarify. Like, he was saying it in a joking manner. Like, he no, wasn't yeah. yes. serious. Like, they they were gonna battle, but it was it was a joke. Anyway, continue. don't worry, don't worry, Ross. You won't hurt his feelings too bad here. But uh, we'll we'll get it. We'll go to the Sioux second year. Um, I know you guys kind of had a dynasty there the year before you came, and then. The, your first year too, you're a good team. So it was, it was almost like a rebuild, but but not not really in a sense too. You guys were still a decent team. Um, so what was that rebuild year like? You're a young, you got named captain, and uh, everyone was kind of like, "Wow, that that's really impressive!" Like a second year guy, captain, and you kind you had a great year, 37 points in 54 games as a young defenseman captain. So you kind of just walk us through that year. Yeah. Um... Coming into the second year, we knew we weren't going to be the team we were before, obviously. Um, We were a lot younger. Uh, We had a lot of new guys. So I think kind of the emphasis was just kind of getting everybody kind of dialed in and bought in as quick as we could and kind of just scratch our way from there, kind of. So, uh, again, we were younger, so we had a lot of guys that were playing first games. They weren't playing a lot of minutes. And then you got some older guys that are, you know, whatever. It's just, it's a rebuild year. And Mm -hmm. I wouldn't really call it a rebuild year because I think in the last 30 some odd years or something, I think the Sioux's only missed the playoffs once or twice. So it's, you never really have a rebuild year, but I think it was going to be a different year for us, obviously losing Frost, uh, Sam Brook, Hallowell, How to Shell. So Peyton, uh, Peyton, yeah, especially Peyton. Um, (laughs) So I think we knew it was going to be a bit of a different year. Um, we got out to a pretty hot start, actually. Uh, and then kind of around the midseason, we struggled for a long time. I think we went 
10 or 11 games maybe without a win. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, and then obviously with the year ending short, we were making a bit of a, a climb back. I think we were one point out of a spot with two or three games left to go. So I think honestly, if the year went on, we would have had a good chance. Um, we would have battled hard. And I think obviously you can't really predict with what happened with the year. So I think the way we kind of finished off the year, I think was a positive. Um, and then we were thinking going back that it would kind of be a bit of an easier road uh, talking about this year, but obviously the government. <laughs> yeah. Well, here, here we are today with the announcement, but yeah, it's kind of, uh, yeah, we're just circling the wagon here talking about that. But I mean, for you, like you kind of set the tone for the show draft in your first year, made a name for yourself as a player in the league and just going into the second year, like you did great on an offensive standpoint, really your, your defense too, good stick, everything like that. And so watching the rankings or anything, were you, were you caught up in that last year? You kind of just do your own thing and, uh, and just focus on your game. Uh, yeah, I think everybody says that, but I think honestly, I kind of tried to take it to a level where I knew it wouldn't affect how I played and how I thought, but I just didn't want to have to think about it at all. Mm -hmm. so, <clears throat> you see them come out you see whatever I think I was 44 or something say mid-season rankings and then I think near the end there I moved up which obviously that'll give you a bit of a, a kick right mm -hmm. um, but again I think I didn't really <clears throat> I didn't try to focus on it because at the end of the day the only thing I did in the race was what mattered not what I thought in my head and what I played out scenarios and stuff like that so I think for me, it was like any other year. It was another year of hockey, and I just tried to play the best hockey I could. I kind of had the same mindset as my rookie year, is I have to come in here and prove to people. So that's all I really did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you know what? You got some good exposure on top of just playing in the Sioux. Obviously, like the top prospects game is one, but you also got to play for Team OHL against Russia there. And, um, you know, you get some – that, that I think I was actually at the game you were playing. It was in Kitchener, right? Yeah. I was there because I drove Tyler Tucker on Barry. Like I was his ride. So um, that was like the first time I'd humble seen brag, him. Humble brag, humble, humble brag. Humble brag. I drove, is, I drove a Santa Drive prospect. <laughs> but um, <laughs> no, but I saw you in that game. Were you playing with Drysdale? Yeah. Oh my God. And cards, you should have seen that D pairing, bro. Like the wheels on those two. It was nuts. In a game like that against older guys, too. Like, so you, you get that exposure, which was cool. And, um, you know, like we said, go to the NHL draft. You were a second round pick to Minnesota. And mm -hmm. uh, can you just take us through the draft? Like maybe a little disappointment, not going in the first, I would assume. But I already know your answer. You're going to say like, you know, you get drafted. That's all that matters. But go ahead. <laughs> I couldn't remember the first night. It was, well, you could kind of see where the ranking was. I think I was 27th in North America. Yeah. And you can kind of get a feel for, where you slot in, say, if you combine the North American and the European. Um, I thought, you know, it was kind of even anywhere around that number was I would have been happy and anything kind of outside I was happy. So day one was I was waiting, but I, I wouldn't say I was expecting something. Yeah. Like I, they made us set our laptops up and all that. And so I sat there for the whole first round and you could hear everything. Like we were behind like all the picks you could hear Batman talking. And okay. again, I, I, I wouldn't say I was expecting something cause I truly wasn't. Um, and obviously if it happened, I would have been going nuts, but mm -hmm. uh, so after that first night, it was kind of just, you know, my coach texted me, Oh, it's fuel. It's this. And I'm like, exactly. It's, and then when you look at the end of the day, kind of where I went compared to where I should have went, say the central scouting rank, it's like, pff, whatever. Yeah. Money's so, still <laughs> I, just, I just have a question about that Zoom call with the draft. Like, well, for one, did you have, did they have to send you all the hats and stuff? Did you get like a bunch of team hats? I think it was a week or a week and a half before this massive box, like this big shows up and what the hell is this? And it's uh, whatever the NHL, is it Fanatics? Yeah. Whatever brand is they use for all the apparel. And I'm like, I got no idea. <laughs> and rip it open. I just see an NHL hat. And I'm like, huh? Next one, rip it open, rip it open. Just hats everywhere. And I'm like, Jesus. 
like and so I, not that, jerseys too though right no not jerseys okay just the hats and that's kind of when it kind of set in it was like like this is coming like you know it, you kind of get that feeling that itch you're like it's coming and you mm-hmm. can put all the hats and you're like Shit, i'd love to play for that team or that team or whatever so that was pretty cool we kind of just had them all laid out whatever just by the side there from the video um but yeah again kind of just touching back to that it was it wasn't really a position of where I got drafted it was kind of just again it was what you do after and I think you've seen a lot of guys you see the percentages of the first and second round guys that play in the NHL and then you see the percentage of the guys that are undrafted and the undrafted guys are higher than the third fourth round like those guys so I think it doesn't matter where you get drafted, what number, whatever. It's you can do work. There's a G on our team, the fifth or sixth round pick. Yeah, G's a fifth rounder, late fifth rounder at that. I think he was like the last pick of the fifth. Yeah, I think he's second, third, or fourth in scoring on our team. It doesn't matter. It really, it truly doesn't. Yeah. Well, well when you have a motor, when you have a motor like G, though, it doesn't matter. And we're gonna we're gonna have him on the pod. So for the for the listeners, that's Damian Drew. I think he's coming up within the next few weeks, potentially next week. But he's he's an animal, and if you want to watch a guy work, or he'll do anything, man. That guy would eat a goalpost for his team. Got, his nickname here is. Can you say that again? What you just said. He'll eat a goalpost for his team. What did he do today in practice? <laughs> Ate a goal. <laughs> <laughs> no, he no. didn't. Tell, tell, tell us about it. Man. He's a Second mess. drill in practice this morning. It was a new drill. We hadn't done it. And he was head down driving the net. And I didn't see it. I just kind of heard it and saw it after. But I think just head down driving the net. And I guess he just blew an edge or something. And I think he went like ribs straight into the post. And then I think he whacked his head too. So I shouldn't be laughing. Gets off the ice, and he was our ride to the rink today. So the one, uh, the one uh, equipment manager comes over. He goes, "G's keys are in your car or in your bag." So I'm like, "Well, oh, great." So G leaves practice, whatever, comes back to the rink. He's like, "Fine." I'm like, "G, like, what the hell, man?" He's like, "Oh yeah, like whole side of his eyebrow here, six stitches right on the corner, and I think he said he had a fractured or bruised ribs or something." He's like, "Oh, I'm fine." Like. <laughs> Man, that guy is an animal play through it yeah no he'll he'll play tomorrow or whenever you guys play next he'll, he'll be in there no that was hilarious though how you said he'd eat a goal post because that's <laughs> <laughs> i love that i uh, love that on him. i got i got one more question about the draft pick but just minnesota obviously like i said did you have a lot of contact with them or like zoom calls or whatever was going on throughout the season? Or did it kind of surprise you that jumped out or you didn't really talk? They are the one team that I had zero communication with. Not once. Zero. Yep. Crazy. Wow. Wow. So yeah. You must've been surprised. (laughs) I was, I was very surprised. I kind of had a feeling when they were coming up, uh, I think they had 37 and they had 39. Uh, they took Rossi, and then when they took a forward with that pick, I was like, they're not going to take three forwards in a row in the top two rounds. Like, could be something, and I'm like, I didn't talk to them all year, whatever, whatever. And then I would say, yeah, it was a complete surprise to me. Man, that's so interesting. Like, we keep hearing both sides of it where they're, they're like, yeah. oh, yeah, I had so many good calls. Or, or a couple times now we've had, like, I haven't even said a word. Or we had one call. Like, I wonder how much weight certain GMs put into that stuff. Like, I really have no clue. But well, it's that's, very interesting for me to hear. I don't know. There's, a, there's a, like, there was a few teams that I would say I talked to probably three or four times leading up to the draft. And those are probably the ones that I would say I had the best feeling with. Um, so I think to kind of get picked like that, was again I wasn't expecting it but I think that kind of made it even better and I think just even getting here I think the player development guys it's like it feels like I've already known them before like but I I didn't talk to them before I got here so yeah it it was weird in the moment but I think now it's kind of just like whatever it's it's normal Mm -hmm. all right yeah I mean we yeah like Raf said we've seen so many times of like hearing guys like that and I mean there's so much talking and like interviews that go on and stuff and I mean 
with the OHL just can't say I'm kind of going back through it again for the second time, Rorky. Um, but uh, yeah. fill out the questionnaire for the Islanders again. <laughs> no, no, that's in person. So I don't have that's, to go through that again this year. That's <laughs> like after a game you lose, you got, it's like 1030. They're like, here, come do a 156 question survey that doesn't really <laughs> Sense. <laughs> man see that's that's another one to add to the checklist talking about the aisles um, questionnaire mm. man everyone we've had on has mentioned that and i mean it, it's hilarious but i mean it works every, for them every right? guy so, that was on your team that went through it the year before told you about it too yeah everyone knows about it, it, it <laughs> it's it's like this thing you're just you're just waiting for it and it, it's creeping up on you and then and then one day it hits you're like holy shit they weren't kidding this thing's legit <laughs> All right. Yeah. And following the draft work, we kind of got into a long off season there. And uh, I know we spent some time at Corny and stuff. So just a few, few fun four on four games and such like that. But how was your off season going for you? Like it was a long one and then kind of just jumping into Iowa after like maybe what has it been a year off almost? Uh, I think it was almost, it wasn't exactly a year off, but pretty close. Mm-hmm. Um yeah, I think it was for us, it was kind of hard. I think we got shut down a lot of times. Um, we couldn't skate a lot of places and we kind of had to wait. So for me, I think the longer summer kind of benefited me, though. I think being in the gym more, kind of having more time away from hockey kind of let me gain a bit more weight um, and, you know, kind of just dial in with that and kind of get to a point where I can can play and be good. So. I think in that respect, it helped me out with kind of my development that way. Um, but I mean, man, I feel for you guys who have been sitting for now over a year um, and kind of can't really do anything about it, kind of just get screwed at this point. But again, for me, I think it helped and I think it prepared me for coming here. And obviously it's a privilege for me to be where I am right now while everybody else is kind of suffering. So I'm grateful for that every day for sure. Yeah, and I mean, a lot of guys did go overseas and stuff, and you were under under contract with Minnesota, so they, they definitely had plans for you and stuff. But, like, I was talking to my parents today when we saw the announcement about the O kind of shutting down. I was like, thank God I went over there just to be able to salvage some kind of season. I mean, get 20 games in or whatever. But, yeah, no, it's, it's definitely nice that you guys can play, and it's definitely nice, like, the older guys there. But it's tough for the draft eligibles this year for sure. But, I mean mm-hmm. – yeah, it was a good off season. We had we had some good fun at Corny, so what wasn't yeah, I, too bad. I heard just a, a little rumor that Rook, you're a floater in the four on four skates at Corny's. You don't you don't back check or what? What's this? <laughs> um I'm trying to think of who sent that in to you because I think I know who. But yeah, that is pretty true. Man, oh, shout out Rorky will hey, shout I'm out more about, Kevin. Oh, okay. I wasn't thinking him, <laughs> but that's a Bro. good that's a good one. It's I all- was, I was a cherry picker too, Ras. But like this guy was beyond bad. No, he would just legit stand at your own goal line and take a pass, and then go on in a two on O. Yeah, I think some of those skates were a little bit outrageous, and I think it kind of got to a point where it was like, do our skills get our crap done? And then the four on four and all that was kind of just a, I wouldn't say a joke, but it was kind of just like just for fun. Everything. Every, yeah, everybody just doing what they wanted. So I'm not really going to back check when we're going three on three, four on four inside the blue line. So I just you know, kind of hang out and do my own thing. But you know what? When it, it when the show guys were out there and like you had Delhi out there too and like Delhi goes hard. And um, like when those guys were out there, it's pretty legit. But like other times, yeah, we just be effing off. Yeah, because those those guys are the ones that are kind of bringing the tempo, and you have to keep up with them. But otherwise, it's it's kind of every man for himself up there. It's a bit of a bit of a debacle out there, at least. But it's good fun, so I mean, can't complain about it. But um, I know we kind of touched on the AHL before, but just like the season itself, like how's your team doing, and you personally, like making the jump up there. I know it's like bigger bods, and you said it's a job, but like. How's the team doing down the final stretch here with like a month to go? Uh, we're doing better. Um, I think we were we we're kind of hot and cold the first kind of 10 to 12 games. Uh, kind of went on a bit of a losing streak, but I, I think we've pulled it back now and we're, we're kind of playing the hockey that we really want. Um, I think if you were to compare it to junior hockey, it's 
like a minor leaguer to a major leaguer in the sense that like kind of everybody's responsibilities and everybody's kind of effort and, and all that. It's, it's a job. It's not really hockey anymore. And, but I think that that kind of helps. Um, personally, I think I've, I've been doing quite well. I've played since the third game of the season. Um, there's been a few injuries. There's been guys moved kind of up and down, but I think for me, it's, it was a bit of an adjustment, but I think it was, it kind of went over pretty quick. I think it was just kind of like stepping into the OHL where you just need a few games to kind of get used to it. And then it's at that point, it's just work really. You're on an ATL right now. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. So um, you're playing to earn yourself an NHL deal, you know, hopefully that can come soon, but I want to know, do you have any like dream purchases or like something you're, you're, you want to buy anything you're going to kind of spend that signing bonus money on when you, if you do sign when I think I, I said, when I slipped up, but I, I don't want to like, yeah. you know, some people are really superstitious. Um, probably a new set of clubs, maybe a golf. <laughs> I'm in need. I've been using the same ones for three summers. I mean, they hit the ball, which is what they're supposed to do, but it'd be nice to have a nice set of clubs. Um, I've kind of looked at cars, but not really kind of like a priority. Buddy, um, you're not going to tell me you need a new car. <laughs> we'll just get, yeah. No, but <laughs> it's running out soon. Yeah, true, I guess. It's always, but... fun, it's always fun to look. It's always fun to look. Yeah. Okay, uh, well, I, well, I, I want to say that the reason I ask is that our partners at Gavin Hockey Wealth Specialists believe that your goals matter. After hundreds of early morning practices and countless hours on the ice or in the gym, you truly earned your success and you deserve to enjoy it. For over 20 years, the team at Gavin has assisted professional hockey players with setting goals and more importantly, providing them with a game plan to achieve them. Whether it's a house, a car, a cottage, or even supporting your family, it is all within reach when you partner with a pro. Check them out at gavingroup.ca. <laughs> um, sorry, Gavin, I kind of butchered the read. I'll, I'll piece it together though, but uh, anyway, I have a question card. It's kind of following that up. So golf clubs wise, how big of a difference? Like, let, let's talk just iron. How big of a difference does expensive iron make to like regular set of irons that I have? Let's say, is it like, what, really are, you, important? what are you rocking? I got these like Wilson ones. I don't know the model, but they're like, oh, they're, yeah. They're not yeah. Horrible. No, those are dust. Okay. But like, <laughs> what, how big of a difference is, is it? you'll you'll notice you'll pick up 10 yards if you get a legit set of clubs um and it, it's night and day you'll be able to spin it you'll be able to feel the ball hit the face and like you you know when you hit a good shot you know when you hit a bad shot i mean yeah like it, it's definitely night and day um wilson eh. <laughs> but hey that's why we're once we get our podcast money running and running so i mean then then you can purchase something new right <laughs> well I, I bought myself the new driver with the gambling money yeah there you go there you go yeah, I, just did, I did catch. i'll say i got a driver i got a putter and a 60 this for like christmas and okay. i got a max driver uh whatever the hell those tailor-made wedges are and uh the new spider putter that's my hey, well Rorky, man, you, you don't even need any other clubs now you just hit oh. driver right beside the green and flop shot yeah, and yeah. Putter. yeah. just hit it far no, the yeah. 60 is my favorite club. I think that's my best club card. I'm a short game guy. Yeah. So, um, we can we can keep it forward. Actually, we got a lot of fan questions – or, sorry, comments from fans before we get to the fan questions just saying that they love the golf talk card. Like, we've kind of been – Rocky, we've kind of been getting into the golf a lot lately, and I asked on the Insta story, like, what people want to hear, and everyone was like, keep the golf talk going. So, I don't, I don't feel bad, like, getting into it. They like hearing from a pro down there, eh? Who <laughs> <laughs> um, asked? No, yeah, you. <laughs> I'm pro. Yeah, now that I broke a hundred, I'm basically a pro. Um, <laughs> yeah, <much>. Could be. <laughs> uh, so we'll we'll get into some fan questions. Actually, before we do, I know we got a story that you you want to bring up, right? Uh, I think I already mentioned it to you, Cardsy, but uh, it was Joe Cramarosa, and I think it was my third or fourth game, and uh, he played with Rockford the year before, and we were playing Rockford. And I line up to next to him on a draw and he looks over at this guy. Eyes just kind of get big and wide. And he just looks at this guy. He goes, I'm going to break your neck. And I kind of like looked at him and I, I thought he was joking. Like it's his buddy. And this guy's like sitting there and he looks at him. He's like, I'm going to break your neck. And one of the other Rockford guys kind of looks over. He's like, Hey, don't, don't listen to him. Like just tune him out, whatever. 
And he's like, I'm going to break your fucking neck. Like, I'm going to break your neck. And his eyes are like popping out of his head. And I'm like, wow, like, this is it, eh? Like, and then I think ever since that point, like, there's probably, I'd say a minimum of two fights a game. I think we have like 457 penalty minutes in like 24 games or something like that. Like, yeah, it's absurd. Like, it's absurd. It's, yeah. We got. Oh, that's that's oh. scary. I think, but but then you have those guys on your team. Like we have Cody McLeod who played, I don't know how many years a pro, just an absolute enforcer. Like it's, but like you feel so safe with those guys on the ice. Like mm-hmm. so for some guys, like that's their job. And I think a lot of guys kind of take pride in it. And I think, you know, at this level, like a lot of guys play their roles and I think they're all crucial to the team. Um, and I think he's just one of those guys that, you kind of skate around the ice and you're like, you know, I'm, I'm probably going to be okay. <laughs> you still, you still cloud, got that right? feeling. Yeah. It's a good feeling. So man, you, you ever, uh, are guys coming up to you trying to like pick on the young kid, like trying to try to get their licks in, you know? Um, I think it was kind of like my OHL season. I wouldn't say I'm, I wouldn't say I'm a tough guy. Really. I think I play a tough game, but I think, you know, there's, there's guys that'll come up to you and say crap to you, but it's kind of like, you know, at this point, I've I've been surprised. There's a lot of guys that we've played against that actually you'd think are fighters, kind of big guys, but none of them really have experience or have really fought. So I think not every guy wants to fight, but I think every guy to a point wants to, you know, be tough and kind of show the higher ups, you know, whatever, whatever way they want to kind of prove to get there. But I haven't really had any run-ins. Maybe like my second game, one guy said something to me and I was kind of like, ooh, but nothing ever came of it. But again, with, with kind of those bigger guys, even if you do hit, get hit, I think, you know, it's, you're not going to keep getting hit. You're kind of, you're going to be protected that way. Yeah. Uh, I mean, okay. We can, we can roll into the fan questions here. We got a lot. I had to narrow it down. Um, the, the number one we get asked every single week, but what stick do you use and, and what specs? I actually just switched. Um, I'm using CCM now. I think it's uh, that trigger three. I think it's, I got it during the prospects game. It was some okay. sort of prototype or custom at that point. And I think 80 flex with a P90 or P92 curve, whatever the CCM one is. Pretty basic stick, no grip. Um, yeah, pretty basic. All right. Nice. Um, this is an interesting one. We should ask this one more, but what do you like to do off the ice for fun? Uh, golfing. Uh, in the summer, especially, we have a cottage. So we're usually there every weekend. Um, wakeboarding. We got a jet ski. We got some toys. So anything kind of really outdoors, really. Okay. TikTok with the girlfriend. Yeah. Okay, oh, should I be looking for some TikToks? <laughs> That's gonna be you soon, Cards. You watch out. <laughs> careful, <laughs> careful what you say. <laughs> hey, we don't want to expose it's cards. It's gonna get to a point, I tell you. It will. <laughs> All right, I'll keep my lips sealed on that cards for your sake. <laughs> um, get your legs in, eight cards. Get <laughs> um, what else we got? Um, oh yeah, okay. So here's. <laughs> I'm just gonna say it. Make sure to get a good pizza with ranch sauce. If you get Domino, if you get if you get Domino's pizza and you don't get a ranch dip cup, you're probably belong in a mental hospital or something. <laughs> like that's a that's a given. Even if it's like the box and you get the Caesar out of the fridge and you squirt it on the box, like it, you know, you need, you you need a, like. I, it, I I'm a big uh, I like the creamy garlic I like like creamy garlic when I, I was like, pizza. Cards, awesome. you a sauce guy or like a dip guy on your pizza or you take it oh yeah, yeah. No, oh, I'm, yeah. A, I'm a dip guy I got a good story about Domino's pizza too let's go uh, me and me and Murr hung out one time I think it was two summers ago uh and we were coming back from something and he's like we're like what like what do you want oh let's get Domino's yeah yeah oh, but I really love creamy garlic dipping sauce and I'm like. <laughs> Domino Domino's doesn't have it. So I'm like, okay, well, you gotta make a decision. Well, we came to the decision that we get our pizza at Domino's and drive over to Pizza Pizza to get two creamy garlics. <laughs> <laughs> the dipping sauce. Oh, man. Dipping sauce. 
You gotta ask him about that. That one's good too. And bro, Mer- Domino's pizza and creamy garlic from Pizza Pizza. That's the combo. Yeah. Hey, and and Rorky, when I was living with Mer, this guy would go through so much dip, man. Like we'd have to, we'd be at the grocery store, we'd be getting like four or five dips a week just because squirting it on everything. He's a ranch guy. He is a ranch guy. Oh, hard. Yeah, and we, there was oh, no ranch. And he, so he had to settle for Caesar a lot. He was a little bit distraught about that. Yeah, I would be. I heard uh, I heard you and Samrook would go sneak down, get the pizzas early before everyone else on the team would get them to get the best slice or something. So Sambo was the pizza guy of the team. So <laughs> the, our assistant coach would text him when pizza was there. So he would be like, hey, pizza's here, right? So uh, I'd go down and I'd go through like some of the boxes and I'd be like, oh, was that a good one? I'd find the best one to to ranch right back up to our room. And then he'd text in the group chat pizza. Oh, yeah. You guys got the inside. Pizza, two dipping yeah. sauces and the best pizza. <laughs> no wrong. That's unreal. Uh, one more from Sam, but he wanted me to bring up that. Um, I don't know, something about how you got screwed in like your FIFA drafts or he said, how many 190 foot drafts have you gotten? So when we roomed together on the road and he was a big FIFA guy. And at that time I was big into FIFA too. And somehow we just got into opening packs and, and doing drafts and all that. And oh, we would always try to get like the sickest, highest rated draft. And we always, we'd get a good one. And then we'd lose in the first round of like the tournament. So every single time it was just the highest draft we could get. And then we would just try to go balls to the wall and do as best we could. But we spent a lot on that game. Oh, my God. He, I've never seen someone spend more money on video games, by the way. <laughs> he this is guy, a yeah. on Like, on NHL, he'll spend hundreds of dollars, like, on packs, opening packs. And, and now he barely even plays, too. And he's just like, it's actually insane how oh, much money he spends on video games. It's, it's crazy. Wild. We had a good time, though. Video games and sour keys. Hey, was he bringing the sour keys all yeah. over? Yeah, guy, I've never seen someone eat so much candy. Anyway, we'll keep it moving. But um, I can't remember who asked this one, but why do you always wear a gray shirt to the gym? It's not normally a gray shirt, but a lot of the times it will be a gray. I do have a lot of gray shirts. I'll say that. And it doesn't help because I got one or two more here that I'll be bringing back. So um, usually a little bit of a self-motivator, see, see some more sweat so I can, you know, I know I did a good job. <laughs> okay, wait, wait, wait. So I heard... <laughs> you say see some sweat i heard you're always showing up late with your starbucks to, to the yeah. workouts what's this and it's, now you're cherry picking and corny skates like can we get a work ethic check maybe <laughs> i if you want to ask cards i think i work pretty hard during the skill skates um yeah i know rorky rorky puts in his effort and he's about pro. the off ice though no, hey no I, honestly, i'll say something this year kind of especially i think i got I found, I wouldn't say like a new love, but more love for the gym, I think, because in the beginning I was locked up and I was doing it in my basement. Yep, and like me. that might be the hardest thing to do is just to kind of work out on your own, whatever in a basement. So I think I kind of had a really good appreciation this year for being able, I like kind of getting up and going out to do my stuff. So I think kind of getting up and going back to the gym was kind of a motivator for me. And I think you know, it's an 8 a.m. workout. I show up at 7, 58, 59, maybe a few minutes later sometimes, but, you know, do a few stretches of the warm up. But then kind of once it starts into the workout, it's, you know, it's dialed in. And we had, I don't know, do you know Mitchell Martin? Yeah, Martin? I know Mark. I, I'm boys with Marty. Yeah. So he would work out with us in the summer. And I think he would do like an hour and 15 workout in 25 minutes. <laughs> guys he, out. he just wouldn't take rest and <laughs> i think a lot of us some days would actually try to keep up with him and it was like wow he's a beast <laughs> like he would just go man like he'd be doing extra too he'd finish all of his complexes and he'd do extra before we got to <laughs> insane bro all right places to go <laughs> crazy but um, yeah, I am known to show up late with Starbucks, but I always get the workout done and I'm always there. So all right. <laughs> I just show up late. Um, what's your game day routine? Like if you have one um, any, and any superstitions like with that, 
nothing really crazy, honestly. Um, I think pretty laid back. I think I'm usually, if it's a home, well, I guess if it's any game day, I'm usually skating in the morning. I like a morning skate. Um, usually come back, I'll play maybe a bit of PGA for a little bit or just kind of watch some TV, something like that. Kind of get me tired. Uh, nap. I will say the one, another superstition, yeah, is Starbucks before the game too. Um, usually leave a little bit earlier, get Starbucks. Um, nothing really crazy at the rink. No superstitions in that way. Um, I wouldn't really say anything on the ice either. I think I'm kind of just in my own world, kind of getting ready. Okay. Yeah. Are you uh, are you taking Snapchats at your Starbucks and sending them around? No, no. Another thing is junior yeah. hockey. Like you know, sometimes you don't get like they say no phones in the room and shit. Yeah. Like the second you step in the rink here, your phone's gone. No. Okay. Like, they don't. They don't take them. But like you, like it's your job. Like you yeah. don't sit at your nine to five and you don't sit on your phone the whole time, right? Like. Yeah. I think it's. I, I, not an issue for me. Like, I don't care. I don't, some guys listen to music. Like you're allowed to have your phone if you're listening to music, but like, you don't just see guys like on their phone and sh- like before the game. Well, if you're on your phone before the game and that like, they'll, they'll legit snap your neck. Like yeah. buddy said, yeah, yeah. Break, yeah. <laughs> break your neck. <laughs> but I think grass, does that pretty much do it for the fan questions? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I think that pretty much does it. I mean, we got we got a good uh, time slot here. I know we started a bit late, some technical difficulties, and Rorke running late because G ran himself into a post this morning. But uh, all in all, really good interview. Fun to catch up with you, Rorke. We really appreciate having you on this week. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it as well. It was a lot of fun. All right. Cheers, buddy. All right. I want to thank Rorke for that. That was a good one. Funny guy. And uh, it, it was cool getting to know him and chatting with him. What do you think? Yeah, it was fun, man. I mean, I've known Rorke since I was probably like eight playing spring hockey together and stuff. So nice to catch up. Haven't seen him obviously since, uh, since the season started, but good to know he's doing well there and, uh, lucky guys getting his vaccine. So I mean, I know you're, you're in line. Would you get it? You get it tomorrow. tomorrow. When, when this comes out, I'll be vaccinated. That's, that's a big thing, man. Good for you. And I'm happy for you. I know, uh, I know I'll be waiting in line and can't wait to get mine. So Yep. Soon enough. And uh, I just want to say, because uh, we didn't mention it in the interview, but we, we talked about it with Rorke before the interview, like off air, that we are sending him an Axel watch as we always do. So shout out Axel watches one more time. But um, like I said, we're going to talk about the Jake Paul Ben Askren fight now. And uh, for, you know, this is kind of basically the end of the podcast. If you don't want to hear about it, you know, feel free to sign off. But for the people who do, I have an interesting take. But first, do you want to just kind of like sum it up, Card? Yeah, it was a joke. Um, I, think, I think Jake Paul just needs to fight a real boxer, be put in his place, and uh, that'll be the end of it. Because I think if he fights a real boxer, it's over. Like, we're going to see his brother fight Floyd. Like, Floyd won't have the power to maybe knock him out. Like, he's getting older. His punches aren't as strong. But, like, he'll dance that guy in the ring. And, like, those brothers, like, I can't stand it, man. I'm not a YouTube guy either. Like, I don't watch these guys' videos or anything. So, like – Oh, it was frustrating, but like, man, like this guy hasn't even fought a boxer. He fought a small basketball player, a UFC guy who hasn't fought in a while and looked like he was out of shape. And then his first fighter was what? A, another YouTuber. I, I don't even know what his first one was, but I know like he hasn't fought. A I thought he boxer. fought KSI or something. Somebody said KSI's brother or something. It's a joke. Yeah. Like I, I agree with you and, and to kind of get into the fight first round knockout and, uh, I mean, listen, I got to say this, man, and I'm sure you've heard it or seen it. I, I don't I don't know if I believe it. Maybe I do, but I'm just going to say it. Like, this might have been staged, dude. Yeah, There's a conspiracy theory that it was rigged for Jake Paul to win. What do you think of that? Yeah, yeah no, I, I don't doubt it, man. Like, the guy was just loving it after he got knocked out. And, like, the knock, yeah. it was kind of nuts, too. It looked like the guy was fine. Like, he, and then yeah, he was wobbly there. for one second. He could have – but, like – He's smiling. Everyone, like the big video that went out, he was smiling. His wife's smiling, hugging him. Like they're just laughing it up. Walking his post game interview, he's, he's, or post whatever fight interview, he's laughing it up. And I mean, quick, easy payday for him. And it's just like, you wonder, man. Like a lot of people wonder. So I don't know. Do I believe it? Like I, I want to say no, but part of me does. Like part of me thinks like it's, it's very like conceivable that it could have been. 
man. Like, oh, for yeah. the ref to not let him get back up really that early into the fight, like, I don't know. So I'll throw that out there for the listeners to debate, but it's just an interesting one. And a lot of people are saying, like, Ben Askren, this guy, like, Olympian, like, former national champion, gym, like, this guy's a gamer, dude. And for him to, like, to a top-tier athlete, for him to not even care that he lost, like, just laughing it up after, a lot of people are like, he just took his big payday and doesn't care. Like, like a lot of people think he, it was rigged because of that, because any athlete would be upset, right? Yeah, and those those guys like the Paul brothers, they have money from YouTube, and it's it's a bit absurd how people can make money these days. But um, no, like they got money, they got money to pay him off. They got a lot of money for that stuff. So I wouldn't. I don't even know if they were the ones who paid. It It could have been Triller that put on the fight though to make like. There's a lot of people. Honestly, it could have been anyone. But yeah, I I, I was thinking more Triller. You're calling everyone out under the moon here, under the sun. Sorry, but uh, yeah, you're just exposing Triller. But I mean, we'll we'll keep that on. Yeah, come at me, trailer. Set me up in a boxing <laughs> ring. Pay me my million, and, and I'm down to, to fight it. <laughs> yeah. Cool. But um, uh, I mean, that that anything else you want to touch on? Like that basically wraps it up. Yeah. No. Just obviously sad news about the OHL. I'm about to run under my year end Zoom call with the Barry Colts. I guess uh, kind of oh, wrapping man. up and just look forward to next season. I just want to give all the OAs a shout out too in the OHL. I mean, for those 2000s, I feel for them. Um, the 99s we fell for last year and they got a whole season in pretty much, but even worse for the two thousands don't get to have their farewell tour, but you know, it's tough. But with that being said, I think, I think that does it for us this week. Um, I appreciate everyone's support as does Rask and uh, everyone who's listening to this, go sign the petition, allow golf courses back open. So me and Rask can uh, have some sanity here and uh, be able to have time, but now everyone enjoy your stay at home order and uh, stay safe.